Hi everyone, so I wanted to do a quick video about our conscious conception journey so far just because um, when I do talk to people about it they have a lot of questions and um, with everything going on in the world at the moment I think it's one of those things that is really helpful to hear other people's stories when they were thinking of trying for a baby and then all this stuff has happened and it leaves you with um, what do I want to do now kind of thing. Um, and we definitely went through that ourselves. Um, anyone that I mention in this, I'm going to tag in the comments. But there is a really nice piece written by Tessa, the soulful midwife. Um, just about like conceiving with COVID going on basically. Um, so first of all, what is conscious conception? It's just, I think at a basic level you can say, it's just more of a holistic view at conception. And the idea that the baby's soul is around you your whole life um, but they're definitely there to communicate and lead and they have a say in things as well um, so and for us we were raised catholic um, we both wouldn't say we're religious um, I, I think as the years go on I've kind of been more anti-religion like I'm not against anyone that follows a religion I am just like know that an organized religion is not for me and I really struggle I think the, the more I get into birth the more I struggle with the idea that a man created anything like it was a woman come on like <laughs> it has to have been made but like women make shit like men do not um but we were like those similarities in the having faith in something that you can't see or touch and that yeah that true faith that true trust um, that came and we were taught with religion that I'd kind of let go of has come back in a big way through this conscious conception journey. Um, so that's been a really nice part of all of it. Um, so with my son, we didn't do any anything at all, really. Um, we d I didn't even take vitamins. We just kind of had this window where we thought – that would be a good window to try for a baby, but we hadn't done anything on the should list. So we owned a house, but we didn't, but it wasn't a family house. We weren't married. We didn't have X amount in the bank. Um, we hadn't traveled like we wanted to all these things that, um, that, yeah, we just like, there's nothing off the should list. So, um, we gave ourselves a window of a couple of months where we're like, we're just not going to prevent anything, but really we'll like, it's not going to happen. We'll give it a year and then do it properly. Um, and once, you know, everything's in place kind of thing. Um, so I've had a really weird cycle. Um, I bled for two weeks. Um, and then we had a death in the family and, international travel so all these things where I was like there's no way we would have gotten pregnant and you know in in two months it was unlikely anyway um so I was really at peace with like it wasn't going to work out for us and you know at least the positive would be that then you know we've we've got more things in place um when it does happen but of course <laughs> literally got pregnant that first month um and one th one thing that I am concerned about in the conscious conception is my anxiety taking over of like the, well, I know I've ovulated, um, like, and even then I knew, like we'd been doing the cycle tracking for two years. So I knew I'd ovulated and I just thought it was all unlikely. Um, but I'm worried that this time around I'll be like, I've ovulated, like test, 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 um, and all that. Whereas like back then with my son, I was so convinced I wasn't pregnant that um, I didn't test at all until I ended up being six weeks pregnant. So I got a very clear yes, but I wasn't sitting around being like, can I test? Um, will it be positive? Like, what if it's not? Or anything like that. It just was. Um, so then, yeah, like coming to now, um, we moved into this house been here like a year and a half almost and as soon as we moved in like we'd had the name for our next baby picked out already and we refer to we've picked one bedroom we're like that's that baby's bedroom we refer to it by name um 
and nothing is allowed in that room that isn't directly baby related like it's not a junk room it is the child's bedroom and the nursery so we're doing that um we have a christmas ornament for the baby that's been on the tree for the last few years um everyone's gonna see this and look for it next christmas now um but yeah like we're just doing those things and then middle of last year or so uh tessa the soulful midwife did a circle on spirit babies so i went along to that um and left that going okay i'm not crazy um because we've been talking to our baby all this time and she actually said like yeah they're around us you can communicate with them and all this and told me about the book spirit babies so i read that that's on my resources page doula library um i'll try and put all that in the comments as well um so i read that and a lot of it made sense to me and was just like fitting in with what we're doing um started listening to some podcasts on the topic and it just all seemed like a really nice way to go about it to give that trust um and having that connection so yeah like we that was just like mostly what we're doing anyway and then um we eventually started seeing a naturopath uh chanel from with wellness um and she's honestly the first naturopath i've ever seen that i feel actually genuinely looks at things in a holistic view um, so she's been great. We've both seen her. Um, you know, it, we looked at our diet. We've changed diet. We've been on vitamins. She's made us take a real hard look at our relationship and fix the things there. Um, one reason we did really want to do health and body stuff before looking at conception this time is because my husband is now on certain medications that um, m medical doctors say there's no problems with that but holistic will say that yes there is problems with that so it does concern me um but yeah we we did a lot with that and i've started doing reiki with stacy from holistic journey perth um and that's been more of our inner work and work on myself um i still have no feeling of what gender we'll have like with my son i knew as soon as i was pregnant we we're having a boy um but yeah, this time I have no, like, no strong feeling one way or another, but I do know that if we were to have a girl, um, like me from a year ago to now, like my daughter needs me to be the strong woman that I want her to be um, and be yeah, everything that I want her to be. So there has been a lot of inner work on that kind of stuff. Um, and I do feel like, one of the best things that has come out of this journey so far is that there's so many strong, wonderful women around me, like the women I've been using. Um, so with Tessa, Chanel and Stacey, um, plus the women I've met that are also doing conscious conception, um, other doulas and birth workers and stuff. Like um, I feel like we're in a spot where if we had a daughter, oh, like, fuck, she is going to be surrounded by so many amazing female influences um, that, yeah, like, it's, it's been a whole journey and I'm very grateful for that. Um, but then, of course, you know, we've gotten closer to the actual trying part. Um, I don't like the actually saying trying. I end up saying trying, but I like the term trusting to conceive better. So we've been approaching that. And then suddenly my husband lost his job. So we're back into that. Well, do we, um, you know, it might not happen. We might not be in the best position. And I know a lot of other women will be feeling that right now. What helped me a lot was talking to Tessa. Um, she's such a calming, <laughs> beautiful woman. So we're doing soulful journey with her. And she was like, well, no matter what you choose, that's going to be the best choice for you. But, you know, you have this trust in the baby that they will come when is best for all of you. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so, you know, we can say no and still get pregnant or we could say yes and it not happen. So um, we've been doing this journey with that, wanting to develop that faith and that trust. So now more than ever, it's time to tune into that, I guess. Um, 
And yeah, it's been a lot of backwards and forwards, a lot of strong feelings. And we've ended up saying that, yes, we think it's best for us to keep going with how we were going and with the plan we're going with. But definitely those feelings of just jumping out of my skin excitement that were happening have gone away. Um, I was having a lot of dreams and feeling like communications from my baby through dreams. And they went away while I was so stressed, but they're starting to come back. Um, And just this, yeah, I was asked, do we feel baby? And yeah, it just feels like there's been a shift the closer we get that it's not, oh yeah, like one day in the future when we have a baby, it's, oh yeah, like this time next year and like the baby will be here or we'll be pregnant or um, all those kinds of things. And it just feels like a same as like when you book a holiday, like you plan the holiday or whatever, and then you book it and you're like, oh, that's actually happening. And now we're on countdown and now we're going to pack the bags for the holiday and we've got to do this off the list and everything all in prep because it's definitely happening. Like it feels almost like that. I don't know if that's explaining it. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the article that Tess has written about it. If that's something you're struggling with of not knowing if you want to keep trying to conceive or not during all this chaos um and yeah like so the dream's coming more frequently for us um there was a bird that I did a um circle with Tessa and we did this meditation thing and it said follow the bird and the bird I saw was one that's come to our house like randomly um but then the closer we get the more frequently I see the bird so I think that's kind of a connection to baby as well um but yeah it's like definitely a bird that stands out to the other ones because other birds come in flocks or they swoop down and feed or do something sit there and sing or whatever whereas this bird kind of comes I see I notice it just sits there for a second and then it flies away and that's all that ever happens um but even in the last like week I, I, I see the bird like once a month I've seen the bird three times in the last week um, so that's been really cool. Um, I've also done little things like I'm painting stuff for the nursery and I'm setting up like a birth altar. Hang on. I might have to, I love her, so I'll have to show her up. I've got like, it's hard to see, but I've got, yeah, I've got like my little birth altar. I've been doing like these womb cleansing, um, or fertility type meditations and listening to different podcasts on conscious conception and just like all this like and trying to get outside under the moon to sync my cycle to the moon cycles um so there's been lots of little things as well and yeah hopefully I've explained it well if anyone has questions just message me or comment I'm happy to answer them um love hearing other people's stories as well or experiences if you want to comment of like where you're at or what other things you've found to connect a baby just like leave them in comments um, yeah, hopefully I've explained that well. I did record this before, but then as I went to upload it, it said my video was too long. So <laughs> now I'm like, did I say that this time or is that just what I covered last time? Um, but yeah, definitely let me know if you have any more questions and I will um, share the link to the review I wrote of the Spirit Babies book. Uh, I definitely recommend reading that if you're looking at all this conscious conception type stuff.